investigation. In a CBS 11 News exclusive tonight, a terrorism plot broken up by the FBI. It's a story involving white supremacists armed with poison gas in East Texas. The case is so sensitive that President Bush received daily intelligence briefings about it. And tonight, CBS 11 investigator Robert Riggs uncovers the details for us. Robert. Tracy, the underground activities of a New Hampshire militia supporter in Tyler set off national security alarms. Terrorism investigators suspect Bill Krar may have been a traveling salesman who peddled deadly sodium cyanide bombs across the country. Secretly operating behind the scenes in East Texas outside Tyler, white supremacists produced deadly cyanide bombs capable of killing hundreds of people. Inside these rented storage units, federal agents discovered the chemicals and plans used for making the same poison gas once used by prison death chambers. These photographs obtained by CBS 11 News show an arsenal of illegal machine guns, boxes filled with a half million rounds of ammunition, 100 homemade bombs, gas masks, antidotes for nerve agents, and a Ku Klux Klan calling card. They certainly had the capacity to be extremely dangerous. This common law couple headed to federal court in handcuffs and leg irons is at the center of an investigation that triggered domestic terrorism alarms as high as the White House Oval Office. 54-year-old Judith Bruey and 63-year-old Bill Krar respectively pleaded guilty to gun charges and possession of a sodium cyanide chemical bomb. One would certainly have to question why an individual would feel compelled to stockpile of sodium cyanide, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, acetic acid, uh, unless they had some kind of a bad intent. Two years ago, the New Hampshire couple quietly set up business as a gun parts manufacturer at this storage locker in Noonday, Texas. Until now, Noonday has been known for the sweet onions grown here. It's the last place residents expected to find homemade poison gas bombs being produced. Why did they pick such a small storage facility? Why did they pick this town? Because I know they're from up north. How did they find us? Crar and Bruy refuse to cooperate with federal prosecutors and will not divulge their plans. In this affidavit for a search warrant, an FBI agent indicates that Crar was actively involved in the militia movement, a good source of covert weaponry for white supremacist and anti-government militia groups in New Hampshire. According to the search warrant, on the day of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, Krar raised suspicion at a New Hampshire storage unit. An employee told the FBI that Krar was wicked anti-American. It's scary. Um, when you look at their capabilities, you look at the vulnerabilities of our society, uh, we don't have to, to concern ourselves so much with um, only foreign terrorists, but we need to concern ourselves with domestic terrorists too, and these guys are very dangerous. According to the FBI, these papers seized from Bill Krar indicate plans for a covert operation. A document titled Procedure lists code words for meeting places in nine cities to be referred to as zones. Other notes provide code words and instructions on how to throw law enforcement off their trail. But the target for these escape plans remains a mystery. Bill Krar drew the FBI's attention when he sent a package of counterfeit IDs for the United Nations and Defense Intelligence Agency to the wrong address. Krar's note inside stated, hope this package gets to you okay. We would hate to have this fall into the wrong hands. The recipient in New York called the police. A disturbing question remains unanswered. How many more poison gas bombs may be in the hands of unknown co-conspirators? Tracing we'll, we'll look forward to some answers on that we one will. too, Robert. Thank you.